Hey guys, I just bought the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, the combo kit with the AMS up top, and it comes with some carbon fiber, some white support, and some green that's already gone. So in a couple days of using this thing, this is my very first 3D printer ever, and I wanted to make a quick video for you guys out there in the same boat that will give you all of the basics that you need to know to start printing well, having zero knowledge of 3D printing. I'm going to run through a bunch of stuff and just give you the basics of what's not covered by some things that you need to know. Starting out with this quick install book. It is fantastic. Setting this thing up and getting it working is actually a breeze. There are only a couple tiny things that I wanted to mention about this. Go through and do all of these steps in order, do exactly what it says, and you will notice that there is some foam pieces that will be under your plate. You will be tempted to try to pull them out because it doesn't say anything about it in there. Do not leave them in there. You have to do the calibration first. Calibration lifts the plate up and then you can remove them. There is a tiny little note about that not to remove them until here, but it's after the calibration step. So just pointing that out. And the other thing that is confusing is it talks about desiccant and it has it labeled like something has the word desiccant written on it. And I had no idea what desiccant meant. In the top of your AMS, you're going to have these little vents that you can pull off. And there's a little bag of that stuff is desiccant. It comes in a uh, plastic sealed bag. You rip off the sealed plastic bag and you leave it in the uh, bag that holds the desiccant. This is just something that gets rid of moisture, and then you put it back in there and you put the cap back on. In the last controversial step is uh, whether or not to use that glue stick, and I learned that I need to use the glue stick. The other thing they don't mention is do not touch this plate anywhere because you'll get fingerprints on it and the oils will make things not stick, and not sticking is bad. So what you're gonna wanna do with this, it's a magnet and it sticks on here really well. You just take this and you wash it with Dawn dish soap is what people recommend. Any kind of dish soap, a little sponge, get it nice and clean and it will look kind of like this side over here. Then dry it off uh, and don't touch it with your fingers. Take that glue stick, just go back and forth like this all the way down it until you get it all covered in glue stick. Drop it back in here and you're ready to print. Now the carbon fiber spool was the only one that was difficult for me and they do give you warnings that those can be temperamental. So I made a separate video, I'll put a link to it up here on uh, the carbon fiber spool itself. I think it deserves its own little video. The only other setup thing that I didn't mention is the SD card. So if you get an SD card, I just have a 64 gig micro SD card. You stick it in that slot and that will enable uh, time lapse videos to be made of everything you print, which is awesome. And you just go to the gear down here and you go to general and then you can hit format if you put a new SD card in and it will be formatted ready to go. If you go to the folder thing, you can go ahead and click that 3D Benchy. That seems to be the first thing everybody prints. Pretty cool. Make sure that your printer works. The second thing I would print is right down here, this little bed scraper. That is this thing. It helps you get the stuff off of the bed after it prints, including the little test lines that it's going to print all over there. They look like these things, and with a scraper, it's really easy to get all that off. And third thing I would print is uh, these little things that go in the tubes to add a little bit of weight and help with the moisture. I'll put a link to all this stuff in the description of the video. On the back of the unit, this is what everybody calls the poop chute, and that's where your uh, stuff is going to come out. So if you have this up against a wall, it's going to come out and fall down here. And since as a newbie, you'll be using PLA probably, which I recommend for new people like myself, is uh, they say you want to actually leave the door open so it doesn't get too hot in there. If you don't have your AMS sitting on top, you can also remove the top glass for more ventilation. All right, really quick slicer tutorial. So for the software side of things, uh, when you install this, you're gonna install Bamboo Studio, which is their essentially slicing software. <laughs> It is super cool, but uh, I had to set some things up. Most of the defaults are probably good for you, but let me share what I learned. So first of all, when you start this thing up, you select all the different 
printers that you might have, and sometimes this does not pick the one you're using. So for me, the, uh, the X1 Carbon .4 nozzle, that's the nozzle that comes with it. And if you're using the cool plate, you have to make sure that you have cool plate selected up here, which is what I'm using. It is helpful that it shows that over here for you. Uh, and sometimes your filaments, when I load a new project, I notice that they have weird filaments in here. I guess it's what comes with the project. But if you click this button right here, it will reload your filaments from what you have in your AMS. Um, and click on the advanced thing. It just shows you more options down here. Uh, my biggest issue was this thing uh, was on extra draft by default. So the first few things I printed were pretty crappy. Um, so I switched it to the 0.2 standard and I actually made some changes and saved them. So I created my own preset so that I wouldn't lose those changes. All right, so then you have all these different tabs down here. Um, I didn't really mess with any of these things. Um, if you go to strength, when they talk about having two walls, everything I've seen has two walls, that's what you're going to do here. Your infill density, um, this is 15 by default. I think I've changed mine to 10. Um, but here are where all of those settings are. Speed, I haven't touched any of those. Support, so I did enable support and there was a cool video that showed about tree, how to use the um, tree versus the normal. And if it's on auto, it auto generates it for you. If you put it on manual, you can make your own and that's what I had to do. I'll show you a brief thing on that. I'll put a link to a full, a uh, really great video that I watched that showed me all of this stuff, but I'm just gonna give you guys the um, basics. So if you double click, or if you, uh, I have a Mac, so if I, uh, do the touchpad with two fingers, I can move this around. If I do it with one finger, I can move it like this. So you can see your model. Um, this is a really cool Porsche vehicle that I printed. Oh yeah. So let me just show you about the supports real quick. So if I click on this, you actually have to highlight uh, the piece you're working on in order to enable all of these things. So you see if it's not clicked, these are all grayed out. So that took me a while to figure out. You have to click on the piece you want. And then this one right here is the support paintings. If you click on this, um, you can paint where you want the supports to be generated from. And um, oh yeah, up here in view, the other thing you should change is I changed it to orthogonal view uh, from perspective and I changed to show overhang. Okay, so this uh, area right here in purple is where I have already painted because I wanted to add a support there because when I print this piece, uh, this part right here is only attached by this light blue color to the plate. So it's not a very uh, big area. So I added a support up here so this piece that's um, printing up in the air will be held up the very first time I printed it it became detached and screwed up the print so I was practicing support stuff here so with it set a tree manual if I left click and draw on an area that purple part is the area that it's going to um, have a support touching and if I and if I shift click on here, it will uh, erase the areas that I just drew. And if you right click and you draw, this red area is, it will, uh, it blocks the supports. So it will not put a support here. If you were to do an auto and there were some areas that it generated, you could block them and take away those areas where they're gonna add supports. And after you have your supports drawn how you want them uh, or anything in general, after you have this area set up, you click over to the preview tab and the preview tab will run the slicer and it's actually slicing it and deciding how it's going to generate this thing for you. And then it gives you this big long thing here and the information uh, that it shows you here is based on what you have selected here. So for the color scheme, it always defaults to filament to show 
what uh, filament is going to be used for this. So for mine, I have, uh, it's black because I'm using my black carbon filament and it's really hard to see. So what I like to do is you can change this to line type. And that means that uh, the green one is your support and the orange is what you're normally going to be printing the object you want to print. So um, that makes it a lot easier to see. And you can see that this tree design, oh, you can click this little arrow thing, get that out of your way. So this little tree design comes up and it's going to support my piece right here. So it's automatically doing that. So this is a uh, support piece. And one of the things you can change over here on the left is your support base and your interface. So the base is the bottom part of that. The interface is just a little tiny layer that actually makes contact with that. So what I actually did is I changed my base uh, back to default. Well, it's actually going to select this one. So I'll just select that one to make it more clear. And um, now if we re-slice the plate, Anytime you make a change, you have to uh, run the slicer again. And I go back to line type. All right, now you can see that there's a little different color here, and that is the support. Um, and this thing is really cool. It shows you all of the different things it's going to do and how much time each one is going to take. It's going to show you that the filament change times are 38. So 38 times it's going to have to change the filament um, back and forth between my white and my black here to do this little support. Now the way we had it originally, if you make your whole support out of the support material, let me run that again, you can see it's going to have to change it 144 times. And the total print time is seven and a half hours. So that's why I wanted to go back to this one, because if it's using that same thing, it can just print this as it prints the bottom layers and doesn't have to switch it and drops our time down to four hours and 11 minutes. So it almost doubles our print time if you aren't careful about that little tiny option right here. So let me go back and change this to line type so we can see this stuff better. And uh, one of the last things I wanted to point out is these sliders on the top and bottom. This is the layers. So there's 250 layers for this one. And if you grab this and you move it down, you can see it go to how it will look after this. So after layer 72, that's how it's going to look. So you can come all the way down to your first layer and you can see what's going to happen. And the slider on the bottom is actually for that specific layer. If you click on it, it shows you all the G code that's actually going to run. If you move it back to the very beginning of your timeline, here, let me get rid of that. Uh, so you can see at the very bottom of the screen, it's drawing all of the um, lines that help it do whatever it does. And then it shows you exactly what it's going to trace and exactly where that print head is going to go and what it's going to be doing. And it even color codes what type of fill it's doing and all of that stuff. So it's super cool to see all of that. And again, you can move this up and you can see that for every layer. So this layer shows you that it's going to do a filament change here so that it can do the little tiny support piece. And then it's going to do a filament change and come in and do the rest of that layer in our black carbon. So, uh, super handy little tool here. And then, of course, once you're done with everything, there are options under here to print different things, but almost always I've just hit print plate, and it'll bring you up to this screen, and it once again allows you to pick your filaments here. A lot of times the send button will not be... Uh, enabled and some of that times is if you uh, pick a filament that isn't there or in my case it can't connect to my printer or if the printer is busy with other stuff it won't let you send it um, and this printer thing is really annoying so what you usually have to do is just log out of bamboo studios and log back in and then it will figure out how to connect so 
Hopefully they'll fix that in the future. But those are the important basics that I've learned in a couple days uh, for Bamboo Studio. And of course, uh, makersworld.com is uh, related to Bamboo Studio. Uh, the community can upload a lot of cool STL files here. You can go through, search, find things you like, and you can just click open in Bamboo Studio. And you just allow it and let's see, we'll discard those things and bam, look at that. It just opens it right here for you. Uh, so this is what I was talking about, how these different things show up here. I don't know if that's like whoever created this, if that's the filaments that they had maybe, but if I click on this thing and I can say resync, and I get my filaments from my AMS. So. Uh, and then, so it's, it switched the plate type on me because of that thing that was loaded. So make sure you switch that back and make sure you switch this to whatever one you have. All right, so those are the basics. Hope this video is helpful, guys. Please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. I'll have some more uh, 3D printing stuff, I'm sure, coming up. So appreciate you guys watching. Have a good one. See you in the next video.